let's find the area under the curve f of x equal to natural log of x over x between x equals 1 and x equals e over the x-axis. First, I want to sketch my curve, which will give us a little workout with natural log of x. So for the sketch, well, we're interested in x equals 1 and x equals e. So we should plot those points regardless of what we do with the sketch. So if I put a 1 in to my original function, get natural log of 1 over 1, which is 0 over 1, which is 0. So we have a point right there at 1. If I put e in here, f of e is natural log of e over e. Now e is 2.7, so we might as well call it 3. So natural log of e is equal to 1 over, and then e goes in the bottom. This is roughly 1 third. So if e is about 2.7, I wind up here, and then I plot 1 third if this is equal to 1. So those are my two points, and the area we'll eventually be interested in is right there. Now, let's take a look at the first derivative and critical points, and that'll be enough to get an idea of the graph. If I take the derivative of f, I'm going to use the quotient rule. So that's going to be, if I call the top f, although we're already using f, f over g. Okay, that's how I remember the rule. So it's going to be f prime, natural log prime is 1 over x, times bottom, minus derivative of the bottom, which is 1, times the top, which is natural log of x, over bottom squared. Putting this all together gives me 1 minus natural log of x over x squared. So if I want a critical point, we need to know when the derivative is equal to 0. So that will be, okay, the only way this can be 0 is if the top is equal to 0. So that's going to mean I need to know when, when does natural log of x equal 1. Well, if I go look at the graph of natural log of x, okay, I won't go into how I get the graph. Okay, we've got a few tricks for that we've already seen. Okay, I'll plot two points. And then I note we have the vertical asymptote at zero. Thing to note here is there's only one way to get a value of one. We take the horizontal line at one, height one, and we see it cuts the graph of natural log of x at exactly one point. And that point's going to be above E. So that's going to mean if I want this thing to be zero, I can only do that if I put an e in here, because that'll give me 1 minus natural log of e over e squared, and then 1 minus natural log of e is 0, and that's the only way I can get 0 up here. So x equal to e will be my only critical point. If you notice, we've already plotted the value at e, so I already know where the critical point is, and we've already plotted it on the graph. So now I just need to check increasing and decreasing. Okay, Increasing we already have an idea of because we have another point in this region, but let's just check it by checking points anyway. To check for increasing and decreasing, I need only check a point on each side of my critical point. For the first point, I'm going to check e to the minus 1, which is roughly 1 third. So we put it in to the derivative, and I get 1 minus natural log of e to the minus 1 over e to the minus 2. Choosing this point is not an accident. The reason is I want to stick a point into natural log for which a nice number will come out and for which we don't need to go to a calculator. The minus 1 up here comes out in front to give me a plus sign. Natural log of e is equal to 1, so I get 2 in top. e to the minus 2, I can bring that to the top if I want to throw away the minus sign give me 2 e squared. e squared is roughly 9, so I'm going to have roughly 18 here. All we care about is that it's positive, so we'll be increasing in this entire region here, which we would have guessed since we already have two points. For the above, I'm going to use f of e squared, which is roughly 9, so that's on the other side of e, 
which is roughly 2.7. So we have 1 minus natural log of e squared. The 2 comes down in front. Natural log of e is equal to 1. So I have 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. In the bottom, I have e to the fourth. Well, e squared is roughly 9. This is roughly 81. Okay, it's probably not close to 81, but the idea is we're just estimating. The real point is, is that this will be a negative number, so we're going to be decreasing in this other region. We could just connect the dots, but we need to be careful. Why is that? Because you might be tempted. So this side's not a problem. The vertical asymptote's still going to be there, so I can connect the dots over here and then push that all the way down. On this side, you don't want to make this thing go below the x-axis. Why is that? Well, if you look at the graph of natural log of x, when I go past 1, this thing is completely above the x-axis, meaning natural log of x is always positive when I'm out here. Okay, when I go past 1, natural log of x is always positive. Also out here, actually past here, x is always positive. So if I divide natural log of x by x, I'm always going to have positive numbers. Since I'm decreasing and I'm always looking at positive numbers, the only way I can go is a horizontal asymptote at zero. Well, let's check that for one number just to see as I go out this way. Natural log of x over x should become a very tiny number. If I put 1,000 in for natural log of x over x, okay, we'll have natural log of 1,000 over 1,000 gives me 0.0069. Okay, to get comfortable with that, you should plug in a million, 10 million, 100 million, and you'll see these numbers are getting much, much closer to zero as I go out this way. Okay, the fancy way to say that would be limit of natural log of x over x as x goes to infinity is equal to zero. All right, that's my graph. The idea there was just to get a workout with a natural log. Really all we care about for the problem though is finding this area. So let's do that. Okay, the area is just gonna be given by taking this definite integral from one to e of natural log of x over x dx. I'm gonna do a u substitution because if I notice natural log is here, the derivative of natural log is one over x so this is natural log of x times derivative of natural log of x. This is a special use substitution of f times f prime. It's a composition because we're looking at f raised to the first power. So f is on the inside of this f to the 1. u equals natural log of x. du equals 1 over x dx. So dx equals x du. We put everything in, I'm left with integral of u du. So now I can safely check for new limits. So now I want to switch over to u values. So u of e is going to be equal to natural log of e, but natural log of e is equal to 1, and u of 1 equals natural log of 1, which is equal to 0. So my new limits are going to be 0 and 1. Any derivative of u? is 1 half u squared. I put my 1 and my 0 in, take the difference, and then I'm left with area equal to 1 half.